morning all and uh, my turn. Uh, yesterday evening I, it was a very interesting uh, session uh, to hear about uh, the dreams I would say and the requirements uh, far out in the, in the future. Today in uh, my uh, short talk, I'm going to try to limit it to about five minutes, I'm going to address more uh, one of the instruments that has been uh, set and uh, mentioned as well by the previous speakers being the 5G infrastructure PPP, and so the 5G public-private partnership. Uh, as one of the instruments in Horizon 2020 and as one of the instruments basically to try to realize uh, a bit of those uh, dreams. To start, I have uh, basically two or three questions, and I would like to, to see, uh, first of all, uh, before uh, I would say the day of yesterday and today, who did hear about the 5G infrastructure PPP? <laughs> okay, so that's that's already something. That's already something. But now, <laughs> now, now uh, comes a bit more difficult question. Um, who knows basically uh, what the 5G infrastructure PPP stands for? Where are we in the development uh, of the 5G PPP? Uh, who is partner? Who uh, is looking at the content? And where are we on the definition of the content? And I know some people will raise their hands because they are quite involved, but I would like to see, we have a quite broad audience this morning, and I really would like to see who knows a bit about it. Okay, that's, that's better because otherwise I could conclude my speech and uh, already <laughs> take further breakfast. No, I will, I will uh, try to zoom in. Uh, I think it's, it's quite important and I know that uh, uh, people say, okay, yeah, the, the person from the 5G PPP, they have to communicate more. So I hope I can contribute at least a little bit, at least a little bit uh, this morning. So, um, as already mentioned by Mario as well, uh, it brings together uh, basically a broad range of stakeholders from uh, the telecommunications and IT sectors and uh, from the research institutes. And so the total budget uh, for the period covered by Horizon 2020, uh, both half-half, uh, uh, industry and the European Commission, is about 1.4 uh, uh, billion uh, euro for the 5G infrastructure PPP uh, over that time period. As the European industry and society uh, becomes more and more digitalized, uh, providing advanced communication infrastructure uh, is, a critical, uh, is critical for the competitiveness and the growth for uh, the European economy as a whole. And I think this point was addressed as well by many uh, of the speakers yesterday evening. The PPP initiative uh, aims uh, to stimulate the development of the world's most advanced network infrastructure and is a critical stepping stone to ensuring the long-term competitiveness of the European networking industry at large and uh, all uh, the industrial sectors that rely on uh, the advanced ICT services as part of their uh, competitive profile. So, what will the 5G infrastructure uh, basically involve? Um, the communication network and service uh, equipment and environment of 2020 and beyond will be, and I think we heard about more, more about that but, uh, in the speech of Nicolas and Mario, uh, infinitely more rich and complex than today in the next decade. Networks will be capable of connecting people, machines, information and content in a truly flexible and mobile way. The future will encompass our current experience of tablets and uh, smartphone connectivity and will be, go for, uh, be far going beyond that. <coughs> It will also be uh, a moment where I think the telco, the classical telco operators will uh, meet with the uh, newer, I would say, web, web scale players and the requirements of both sides will definitely uh, merge. Facing the particular emphasis on energy efficiency, uh, the 5G PPP will address the novel infrastructure requirements needed to meet the unprecedented growth in network capacity and performance that 5G services will require. There may also be a need to redefine the value chains and to reinvent the roles and relationships between the key players while opening up new innovation opportunities. This will also come back, I think, in the part where we look more at the business models within uh, the 5G and PPP infrastructure. Looking then more at the technical uh, challenges and uh, basically 
the targets and the KPIs that have been put in the contract uh, agreement that was signed between the 5G PPP uh, and the association representing the 5G PPP on December the 17th. It's clear that um, we are looking and doing research uh, to faster, more powerful, more energy efficient solutions for highly integrated, high capacity access and core networks for a wider range of services. I think it's very clear that it's not only addressing uh, the mobile access part, um, like already also mentioned by uh, Mario, it's covering the totality of the network and the end-to-end uh, services, the new end-to-end services to, de- to be deployed on those new type of networks. So it's covering the wireless part, the optical part, the automated uh, network organization, network management and automation, and also implementing the convergence beyond the access of the last mile. It's also about redesigning the network. Um, like Niklas said as well before, uh, we have the old legacy part. Uh, if you look at really moving um, the network to the next step, it's not only about organic growth, it's definitely also about redesigning the network towards information-centric networks, keeping in mind as well the network function virtualization that we may need, uh, taking into account uh, the evolution that we have on the software-defined networks, and definitely also there is a lot of uh, cloudy uh, stuff in the network already today. The network of clouds will be one of the prime requirements that we will take up in our research activities within the 5G PPP. There are some numbers uh, in the contract agreement as well. Um, I'm not going to dwell on those numbers, but clearly uh, it's not about just incremental um, uh, evolution if you look at the 5G PPP infrastructure research work that we try to do. Uh, it's not about having a factor one or two gain left and right uh, in the mobile space or in the rest of the network. It's all about making indeed definitely uh, good progress both on the access level and on the application level within the 5G infrastructure. All right, so um, there are at this point in time uh, three phases foreseen in that seven-year program. Phase one is going to be more addressing the basic research and uh, the vision building, the, which is running from uh, over a period 2014-2016. Uh, the phase two 2016 to 2018 is more looking into the system optimization optimization and the pre-standardization. And finally, in the phase three, um, it's the target to build some large-scale trials and to uh, further uh, develop on the standardization work, which should be aligned with the global uh, standardization on the 5G uh, work that is done. On an economic level, the target is to maintain and reinforce a strong EU industrial base in the domain of networking technologies, which is seen as a strategic sector by nations worldwide. A strategic goal for the 5G infrastructure PPP would be to regain at least 40% of global market share in Europe for future network equipment sales. From a consumer point of view, and I think this is really important, and also yesterday uh, around the speaker's table here I addressed that point, I think really uh, technology is nice and I'm a a technie myself, but I think I learned uh, over the years in the business that finally a techno can make it if there are users in the end. So we should not forget in all the research work that we do within the 5G infrastructure PPP to look at what uh, it can bring to the consumer. And there, the target is to support ubiquitous access for a wider range of applications and services offered at a lower total cost, and I'm stressing the total cost here, with exceptional reliability and availability, and with increasingly efficient use of resources, including both radio spectrum and definitely energy. So... Where are we now on uh, the development of the 5G PPP? And I will uh, conclude with that one. Currently, we are uh, at a technical level uh, working hard to define a pre-structuring model. Basically, a pre-structuring model that allows to have a project-oriented approach and a model which is focused really on projects and uh, not 
purely on a bunch of uh, separate individual proposals that come in. So it's important that I think different domains, uh, different uh, projects, they can work together across and address across issues uh, that are present in, in uh, those kind of projects. A very good example, I think, is the energy efficiency, uh, which should be taken up um, in every strand that we are trying to address. So it's not a problem of one specific space, let's say the mobile access in the network. No, it's totality, a total requirement that we will have to pick up and we will have to address it there uh, in that model. Without zooming in in too much uh, detail, uh, like we see it today, and again, uh, we are having a discussion in a quite broad uh, stakeholder group within the 5G PPP infrastructure. There are four strands, three RTD strands uh, addressing radio network architecture, one, two, convergence uh, beyond the last mile, three, network <coughs> management. The innovation strand is uh, addressing the network uh, function virtualization and the software networks. And on top of that, we will have uh, definitely coordination and uh, support actions. So I would say this is on the, the technical part. I have far more detail. Uh, there are tons of slides and uh, tons of discussions going on at this point in time to try to define and uh, conclude on the pre-structuring model so that we can further prepare on uh, the call one, uh, basically. As to the uh, more administrative legal side of uh, the association uh, running uh, the activities for the 5G PPP and setting the strategic research and innovation agenda, uh, we are uh, enlarging the membership of the um, association up to 36 members. This is going to be done very soon. We will have a general assembly for the association in, uh, on uh, March 11, where basically we will make sure that the field of members, which is quite huge, of uh, the ETP that came alive after joining forces between the Networks ETP and the ISI uh, ETP, which is a very broad group of uh, hundreds and hundreds of uh, companies, we will make sure that uh, by working through that we will announce our membership of the association up to 36 members at least by um, March 11 and have a real good uh, representation of our industry by having all type of uh, industry there, by having the research uh, community there, by having the SME uh, playing field as well. So this is uh, where we are. There are some major events that are upcoming. Uh, we will have a specific session on the 5G uh, infrastructure PPP uh, at Mobile World Congress on next Monday. We are uh, going to have also a session on uh, the future Internet Assembly in Athens, uh, which is going to be in March. And then uh, there is an awareness session that is going to be uh, organized for the 5G infrastructure PPP, which is going to be somewhere in the week of April 28. By this, I'm concluding. Thank you very much.